What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Each Adventure Channel. My name is Josh. Apparently, we're going to be able to see the ocean here in a minute. I don't know if that's true. Usually that only happens on a clear day. And on my way over here today, it was definitely not clear. It was very hazy. But, uh, hey, maybe the wind helped out a little bit. So we're out here in the hills above Marietta and Temecula. We're riding with uh, some of the guys from our Wednesday night adventure rides. So we got Jesse here in front of me. I, I knew he wasn't going to stay in front of me for very long. We got Tristan and Dave. Um, oh, is this where we're going? And a couple other guys. I don't remember their names off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm not very good with names. But since I'm out on an adventure ride, I figured I might as well talk about adventure bikes. So, look. Missed that turn. There's the turn. Oh, what route are we on? What route is this? 8S01. 8S01. I've never heard of that route before. I've never been up here before. I do know where we are going. I've seen this route on Google Maps. And what this does is it winds through the mountains here back above. Temecula, I think this area is Rancho. Oh, I should not have done that. <laughs> but uh, anyways, this route runs through the hills. It is a forest road, uh, but then it dead ends basically back at the uh, Camp Pendleton Marine Corps base. It's pretty cool, pretty cool ride. I've never been back here. Uh, and I especially didn't know that you can loop uh, from where we were at. Sorry. My uh, attention is being repurposed at the moment. Oh, but yeah, anyway, so this is a little offshoot of the road that we were just on. I didn't know you could actually loop all the way around and uh, come up this way. Good to know for future adventure rides. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, this could get bad. Yeah, it's fine. You got this. Oh. Don't be chicken. No, 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 no. All right, Jesse, where'd you go? I'm assuming straight. Straight? Is that where you went? Getting rocky over here. So yeah, anyways, I wanted to talk about adventure bikes. In particular, small adventure bikes. So if you've followed this channel, uh, you know that I am a fan. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know that I'm a fan of small displacement bikes. I ride a CRF250L, a CSC TT250, which is a Zongshan bike, and a Yamaha TTR230 which is a dirt bike and I have been contemplating getting an adventure bike now one could argue and I most certainly would make that argument that the best adventure bike you can have is the one that you're currently riding uh, but for me I kind of came up with this definition of what I what I would like to see in my ideal adventure bike so my CRF 250L could make a pretty good adventure bike if it were just a little bit faster and was a little bit more comfortable on the road. And what I mean by that is the seat, it feels like a dirt bike. I mean, it is wider. Yeah, it is a wider seat than a regular dirt bike seat, but you don't really get that sensation of sitting kind of down into it. You definitely feel like you're on top of it all the time. And uh, for me, I think that's important for any type of adventure bike because, you know, you're probably gonna be riding it for a while and uh, you want it to be comfortable. And uh, that's one of the things I love about my TT250 so much is the seat is ridiculously comfortable for being, for, for how cheap that bike is. So second, it needs to be light. Uh, CRF250L is not a light bike by any means, but for an adventure bike, it is extremely light. For a dual sport, for a dirt bike, it's heavy. For a 250, it is one of the heaviest dual sports out on the market. But if you compare that to, you know, some of the, the weights that you see on the bigger and larger adventure bikes, in the 400 pound range and upwards you know the 315 or whatever this way seems like nothing uh number three it needs to have good 
fuel mileage, I say anything above 60, which is pretty much almost any motorcycle, like 650 cc's or less, usually can get around 60 if you really try. So that's important, but also important that goes along with that is the fuel tank. And this is why I don't, I personally wouldn't consider the CRF 250L and even the newer CRF 250L Rally in that category because 1.9 gallons definitely doesn't cut it. And uh, 2.6 is better, but it's still not great. It's not, it's not, it's not the stuff adventures are made of without stopping for a few tanks of gas. And I learned that on the Sand to Snow series. I think me and Garrett got gas three or four times. Let's see. I filled up right when I got there. Ooh. Rockies, Sandies, Sandy Box. Um, let's see, one, two, three, yeah, probably like four times. So and that was for a 300 mile adventure. If you have gas access available, ugh, it's not a problem. But if you don't, if you don't, then it could be a problem. So that's basically it for me. Comfort, good fuel economy, good gas mileage, and slightly faster than the CRF 250L or even a, any of the 250s out there. Um, 250's fine. If it came down to it and they build an awesome 250 with everything else but the uh, top speed, I'd still take it. Because I mean, realistically, the only thing you need that extra speed for on the highway is passing. Uh, but keeping up with traffic, if you just hang out in the slow lane, you'll be totally fine. Which comes to the next question, which small ADV bike do I want to get? Which small adventure bike do I want? I have a few, I, I mean, I'm pretty much interested in all of them. I pretty much ruled out the 250L Rally because it's basically the same bike that I have with extra fairings and a windscreen. So that leaves me with the CSC RX3, which being a fan of CSC, that is a good choice. I really like the CSC, I love how it looks. I love CSC's business model. Um, I've seen firsthand what it's capable of, and it, you know, it's, it's pretty proven. There's a lot of guys on the China Rider Forum that have passed uh, 25,000 miles, which is uh, pretty impressive, um, all things considered. They haven't been 25,000 trouble-free miles, but 25,000 miles on a Chinese adventure bike is pretty, that's pretty proven in my opinion. You know, my, my biggest concern with the RX3 would be long-term reliability. Um, I'd want to ride it on stuff like this. I know it'll do it. Uh, but that's really stressing the suspension. So, we'll see. I mean, it really comes about, come down to it. I was telling Matt, which is uh, one of my riding buddies, a fellow TT250 owner and an RX3 owner, that the RX3 is probably all the bike I'd really need. But considering the, the price difference between that and some of the new options coming out, um, those new options are very intriguing. So that leaves the Versus 300X and the new BMW 310 GS. Now, I really like the Versus. When I first saw the Versus, I was like, that's it, that'll be my adventure bike. But then, I, I don't know what Kawasaki's doing. Like, they advertise it as any road, any time, but they don't recommend that you go off-road. But then, really, what defines off-road? Is this off-road? I mean, this is a road, but it's, fairly, it's a fairly challenging road and fairly technical. So, you know, like, like I said, what, what defines off-road? The spoked wheels are nice. They're definitely more suited for off-road duty. Uh, it's got the right tire sizes. It's something that the CSC doesn't come with. It does not come with the 19-inch front wheel. Um, so that'd have to be an upgrade. So that just adds to the cost of the, of the RX-3. I wish they'd put that standard. They just stopped to chat with Jesse for a while. But nobody caught up to us, so... We're hoping that nobody crashed, which would be unfortunate. So they're heading back to check on them right now. And hopefully everybody's okay. Oh, so anyways, I was talking about the Versus. I really like it. It's got a huge fuel tank. It's got spoked wheels. Uh, but the ground clearance is not all that impressive, uh, even compared to the RX-3. And uh, the suspension travel's about the same. It's been getting some pretty good reviews. Um, it's kind of cool that it's a parallel twin, but I mean, I would want it to uh, be able to handle some off-road duties. Uh, nothing probably much more technical than this, but uh, I would like that capability in my next adventure bike. So that brings me to the BMW. You know, when I first saw the BMW, I just wrote it off completely, because to me, it looks like a street bike. But then I started looking a little bit closer and kind of looking at 
some of the uh, the choices they made on the bike. So it's got about seven inches of suspension travel on both sides, which is uh, more than my TT250 has. And uh, that's plenty enough, that's plenty good enough to handle most of the terrain that I ride. I'm not a fast rider, so I don't fly through anything at breakneck speed, so I don't really need the suspension uh, to absorb really, really high speed hits like that. So that's a huge plus. I don't know what the ground clearance is. I don't think they've published that yet, but if they have by the time I upload this video, I will share it with you guys. It also has the 19-inch uh, front wheel, so it's a good size for an adventure bike, but I'm not really impressed with the uh, the cast wheels. Um, I'm sure they'll be fine for light duty stuff, uh, but I really wish they were spoked. Just because on rocky stuff like this, you know, you don't want to break a cast wheel or something. That would really suck. Another thing too that I don't like about the Kawasaki is that low sweeping exhaust. And those exhaust header pipes coming out of the engine uh, seem extremely exposed, so you definitely need some type of something to cover that. Whereas the BMW, it still has the low sweeping exhaust, but it is, uh, they angled the cylinder in the engine so that the exhaust comes out the back instead of the front. And that's, that's cool. To me, that's innovation. Uh, Cause pretty much every bike I know of, and I'm, I'm sure there's exceptions to this. So, you know, I don't claim to know everything about motorcycles. So oh, here they are. Hope oh, it is okay. It has the exhaust header coming out the front and then it comes around the engine and then out the back. So it's kind of cool to see one come straight out the back like that. All right, let's see what's going on here. Everybody has battle scars. <laughs> That's character. Trust me, I've got my share. What happened? You go down? Yeah, I did the the new thing of grabbing the front ABS brake. Ah. Yeah, turn the ABS off and it just washed up. Everything else is fine though. Just yeah, some down. scuffs. That's character. The guy at work tomorrow will freak out more than I. <laughs> Well, we found our missing riders. Everybody's safe and sound. I think Tristan dropped the bike and has some pretty awesome battle scars on his crash bars. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and call that a motovlog. So those are kind of my thoughts on uh, what I want out of a small adventure bike. And considering that all the bikes except the BMW are out now, as soon as the uh, BMW comes out and start seeing some reviews, it might be time to get another bike. So unfortunately, I don't have a ton of room in my garage for a million motorcycles. Uh, so one of the bikes is probably gonna have to go. And more than likely, it'll be the TT250. But we'll see. That's still a long way off. I don't think it'll be any time this year. So I got plenty of time to not worry about it and plenty of time to enjoy the TT. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you like adventure and you want to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button. And we'll do our best to bring you new adventures every single week. This channel has lots in store, you guys. Lots of adventures are to be had. And I'd love to have you guys along for the journey. So until next time, guys, have fun, take care, and ride safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, make sure to get out there and have adventures of your own. And I will see you guys next time. Later.